So you don't understand post-processing effects. Not a problem. If you go up and click post-processing volume, you will find a bunch of settings to play with on the right. To put it simply, as far as the average person is concerned, these are kind of like Photoshop or Instagram filters on an app. Now my personal go-to favorite is under image effects called Vignette. <laughs> Just kidding, it's pronounced vignette. I just wanted to see your reaction to that pronunciation. But jokes aside, it adds that dramatic shadow border effect that makes everything look awesome. My other favorite setting that is most definitely overused by everyone, but is still fun to play with, is called Bloom, which is essentially that ambient heavenly glow that you see in every single Unreal demo. Intensity is the most important setting here, but you can also mess with the threshold if you want. Right under Bloom, we have Exposure, which controls how much light gets through to the image. The min and max values are controlled here. Chromatic aberration controls that distorted 3D effect look. Then of course we have the JJ Abrams simulator, which gives you the option to put lens flares on everything. You can change their visibility, their color, and their size with these settings. Temperature controls the cold and warm levels of your scene. It goes from blue to orange. Tint on the other hand controls the green and red levels. Global changes the overall settings of the entire scene. Saturation controls how colorful your environment looks. Zero is black and white, while the other side gives you all the color. The higher the contrast, the bigger the difference between the light and dark parts of your scene. Gamma usually controls the mid-tones and gray areas of your scene, while gain usually controls the highlights of the light areas. I'm not really sure what offset does, honestly, but here's what it looks like when you change the settings. And you have all those same controls for the shadows specifically. So these options are the exact same as the global menu ones, but as you can see, they only affect the shadows of your environment, which is really useful if you want your game to look like that sort of dreamy inverted Twilight Zone episode look. And you also have all those same controls just for the midtones. So anything that is not too dark or too light can be manually controlled with these options in the menu. And of course, once again, we have all those same exact controls, but just for the highlights of the really bright areas of your scene. You'll notice as we change these values, really the only thing that changes is the sky and the brightest parts of your scene. Film grain is when you want your scene to look like one of those old grainy recordings from those ancient documentaries. All of your ray tracing options are controlled down here, and that's really all the main settings that I usually mess with. Like for reals, if you just combine fog, lighting, and atmosphere with the post-processing settings in these menus, then you can get some extremely beautiful looking scenery in a short amount of time with even the most basic understanding of how these values work. So have at it, have some fun, and as always, hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.